These are some steps that we can take to solve general linear equations, so of any variety really, not just the one-step ones. So at the very beginning we start with, we're given a linear equation. The very first thing we want to do is always clear the parentheses, if there are any. There don't have to be parentheses in every single equation we get. So if there are any, those are the first to go. And we do this by distributing whatever the coefficient is into all the terms inside the parentheses. And a common mistake here is students often will mess up with multiplying a negative through. So make sure that if you have a negative coefficient, you multiply it to all the terms inside the parentheses. Next, once we've taken care of parentheses, or if there are none, we clear the fractions, again, if there are any in the problem. And we do this by multiplying each term, and it's italicized, it's very, very important that we're careful with this, we must multiply each term of the equation by the LCD, not just the ones that have fractions in them. Every single term has to get multiplied by the least common denominator. Now what you can also do in a pinch, or if you're having a hard time finding what the LCD is, the perhaps um, less time intensive way, but you gotta pay the piper one way or the other, is to just multiply all the denominators together and then multiply each term of the equation by the product of the denominators. This will make the numbers larger because you're not multiplying by the least common denominator, you're multiplying by some common denominator. So again, there's pros and cons. If you wanna save time at the beginning, you gotta spend it later. If you spend a little more time at the beginning finding the LCD, you can save time later by making the problem shorter. Once we've gotten rid of the parentheses and we've gotten rid of the fractions, we move all the terms that contain the variable. So we're going to be asked to solve for x or y or p or so on and so forth. All the terms that contain the variable come to one side of the equation. And anything that does not contain that variable goes to the other side of the equation. And when we, whenever we move these terms around, we have to be careful to use inverse operations. As a review, the inverse of addition is subtraction, and the inverse of subtraction is addition. Now once all the, let's say we're talking about x's, once all the x's are on one side, we combine those like terms. Once all the numbers or non-x terms are on the other side, we combine those like terms. And at this stage, we should get probably an equation that looks something like 5x equals 30, or something similar to that, where you just have a certain number of x's and a single number on the other side. At that stage, just use the inverse operation again. It'll either be multiplication or division at this stage to solve for whatever the variable you're looking for is. And I mentioned this in the previous video, but we must, must, must check the potential solutions in the original equation. Whatever linear equation you were given with at the beginning, that's the one where you plug in these potential solutions and you're looking to see if you get a true statement. So if you get a true statement, then the potential solution is indeed a solution to the equation. And if you don't get a true statement, then the potential solution is not a solution to the equation. And that's the end of the problem. Now, if you like, I've also listed the same steps as above in a list. And the last little bit of content in this topic is going to be when we solve these equations, we're going to want to classify them by how they end. So we're going to run into problems where when we're solving an equation, we're going to end with something that looks like a variable equals a number. So you do a bunch of steps and at the end, you're going to get x equals four or y equals negative one. These will be the potential solutions and then you'll plug them in and so on and so forth. But the way we classify this equation is we call it a conditional. This equation will only move forward on the condition that x is equal to four, or some other equation will only move forward on the condition that y is equal to negative one, hence the name conditional. Unless this condition is satisfied, the equation's not going to work. Similarly, in some cases, we're going to get something that ends in a true statement with no variables left over, meaning this is going to be just a number equals a number. So you'll solve an equation, all the x's or all the variables are just going to vanish along the way. They'll either add out or subtract out. 
and then you're just going to be left with a number equals a number. So if that's the case, and it's a true statement, 2 equals 2, 7 equals 7, then the original equation is called an identity because it was this relationship the entire time. It was just hiding in plain sight. So this type of expression, I'm sorry, not expression, this type of true statement would result in the original equation being called an identity. Similarly, if we have no variables left over, we solve a problem, all the variables sort of disappear along the way, they subtract out, and we're left with no variables again. We're just left with a number equals a number, but in this case, we have a false statement. So zero equals nine, that's obviously false. Or eight equals 14, that's indeed false again. If we get a false statement with no variables, then we call the original equation an inconsistency. We'll see how to classify equations and how to actually solve them in the next couple of videos.